Okay, now we're recording. So we were just talking about No Shave November, and uh, Dan was talking about possibly forming some sort of group or a challenge or something, and it's funny that you were thinking about that, because I was thinking about something very similar. Um, you know, we're, we're, I'm always thinking of, like, what are ways to really develop relationships with people? Ways to find commonality. And sometimes it has something to do with, with fitness, and sometimes it doesn't have to. Um, and, uh, you know, we've done clean eating groups before, uh, but I've also done, like, a leadership group where we all listen to this or watch this video and have conversations about it. Um, you know, th there's you know, groups that I participate in that are all about watching the show Scandal. And so we like talk about it on Thursday nights. And, uh, you know, of course, the N group, you know, just these groups of common interests are, are amazing places to build relationships. And how cool would it be if you actually formed a group of people who are all committing to do the No Shave November and, um, you know, kind of saying like, hey, I'm not sure if I can make it because I'm, I'm going to get itchy. I need people to help me stay on track. So who wants to be in this <laughs> of not shaving? And then like, have to uh, essentially the point where, you know, officially the whole No Shave November thing is to raise awareness of men's health and testicular cancer and, um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, what if there was some way that you could work together as a group to fund? That could be a really cool cause to. So that was my. Yeah. Opinion. And since my husband told me that I'm not allowed to participate in No Shape November, <laughs> Dan, you can run with that if you want. <laughs> well, you know. I think it'd be interesting to see how much money Rodrigo would contribute to you shaving it. Um, <laughs> how much to him. Right. And a pair of shoes. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably going to happen. No, he has different currency that are not funny. <laughs> Hello, Chad. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Where where are you tonight? Are you at work? Um, Is it chilly out there? You have a hat on. Yeah, I'm waiting for John to get off work at the parking garage, and then we have to walk an hour home. Mm -hmm. And it's cold. <laughs> an hour? Yeah. Whoa. The bus doesn't run this late, so we have to walk. Okay. Well, we're going to get to that beach body car. <laughs> no kidding, my God. <laughs> Give me one, two. I'm ready. <laughs> right, and Chris, and you got a car, and you got a car. I want a truck. <laughs> Beggars can't a helicopter, then, if we're going to upgrade. <laughs> That's good motivation to grow your business. The private jet. I just a job, I don't need a car. <laughs> well, cool. Um, so welcome everybody. Today I wanted to um, check in with how you, how you guys are doing, and you know there's there's some uh, some congratulations that we have in order for what you guys are doing, and then also I wanted to just have a conversation about the topic of finding your tribe. Uh, that's been something that I know is in the TNL training, um, and it's been something that's kind of coming up a lot in in the, the personal development that I've been doing, and um, you know the opening conversation that we had about No Shave November, um, and I'm just seeing more and more that the more that you build and get to know your tribe, the more. Um, the more growth you're going to find as, as a coach as a person, and it's just a whole lot more fun. Um, I mean, I, I think about it like you know, nobody enjoys going to a party where they don't know anybody. You're just kind of standing there by the punch bowl, awkwardly hoping someone will talk to you. I mean, like, I know you guys are all extra. You never deal with that. But me as an introvert, sometimes that happens. And uh, I think the very same feeling happens when you have no idea uh, who your tribe is. 
uh, or you're, you're still kind of developing, like what, who are the people that I just naturally click with that we have something in common and you know, it's something that's meaningful to us that that's in common. Um, and you know, how do you find those people? And then once you find them, how do you, um, how do you strengthen that bond and how do you mobilize your, you know, this tribe around, um, a cause? Um, so those are some of the questions that I want to chat about tonight um, and share some things that I've been learning and, you know, hear from you guys, um, you know, what's working for you. Because I know, um, you know, there's some interesting tribe building uh, that I'm seeing happening for, for all of you. Uh, but first, I want to just start with a recognition officially, since I wasn't on the coach call last week, I want to congratulate Chad for achieving emerald rank whoa it's nice work chad um and uh chad you have only been a coach for what less than a month now about a month oh you're on mute right now There you go. Uh, it'll be a month on the eighth, so yeah. almost. A <laughs> yeah, and I plan to be uh, Ruby by the fifteenth. Because so. you've already got your people lined up. Yeah. So, um, just to kind of put things in perspective, um, it took me, gosh, I don't know, over a year to get to Emerald. And I hovered at Emerald for like 15 months. Uh, and then, then I like got off my butt and like actually started working the business and, and then it shot up from there. Um, so at this rate, <laughs> you're doing really well. <laughs> at, at this rate, he will be on stage for Summit. <laughs> For this summer, yeah, for this summer. <laughs> I have some really big whys that I'm trying to accomplish, so. Yeah, one of them actually not having to walk home an hour in the cold. <laughs> exactly. I am in uh, Vermont. It's a little chilly up here, so. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to not have to have a job where we're having to walk home an hour, so that would be good, too. So let's right. wipe that one out. <laughs> right. So your, your commute is, like, from the living room to your desk. Exactly. That'd be nice. In, in your PJs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it. That's it. And winter is upon us, and ugh, it's going to be bitter. Yeah. Um, so I'm just so proud of you, Chad. Uh, you know, you have hit the ground running, and um, you know while. You know, it's, it's just been incredible to just see you, you know, bite into the training, into the community, and just really take off from the very beginning. Like, it's just been very clear that you know what your focus is, and you're doing what it takes to make it happen for yourself. And, you know, I'm just really thrilled for you. Thank you. For you and John, um, just kind Absolutely. of something that you guys are a team about, which is awesome. And, um, you know, it's something that's really going to make a difference in both of your lives. And, you know, I know you've already gotten a paycheck or two already. And I hope that already, you know, gives you a sense of, of relief and that hope is, is around the corner. Absolutely. That's exciting. Um, do you have any uh, thoughts or reflections or tips for anybody else, um, you know, of, of what you've learned in these past three weeks? Uh, I mean, it's really, I think having that why present every day is something that's been such a big push for me, knowing why this and having, you know, so that I, every time I get a computer, um, it makes it very real, you know, and when you're living in a situation that you're not happy in, I feel like that adds to it. And even more than that, the excitement 
to see that something that necessarily making you any money that you're making this life is, and that I'm more excited than anything else you know like having the fact of posting you know motivational things every day you know I've gotten into so many conversations with people who were like thank you so much for posting that that really that really hit me hard you know that's really what I needed to see you know and so I think just you know realizing how helpful it is for people has just made it work and that kind of kept me good you know to what else learn who else can I reach you know who who needs this really bad and so I think just kind of holding on to that and the thing right now that I'm having to work on is figuring out how to manage my time appropriately so that I'm able to give to the business, give to John, and still be true to all the responsibilities that I have. And so I'm excited to see where the next, where the next month takes me. Yeah, well said. That's really excellent. Um, speaking of motivational posts, I want to transition over to the beans uh, and congratulate Brandon for hitting Success Club this month as well, which is awesome, and to officially welcome Krista. Thank you. <laughs> Krista has been working in the shadows unofficially as a coach for quite some time and is just a natural. Um, I mean, you're just amazing. I'm just so thrilled to have both of you on our team. And uh, um, and so, Brandon, you are halfway to Emerald. <laughs> yes, we're close. We're close. We're about there. Yeah, we're about Come there. On. We about got, got there. it. Yeah. Cinched up. So close. So close. Um, is there? Uh, what's what's when's it gonna happen what are you thinking this week hopefully we yeah. have strategically placed the mother-in-law in the position <laughs> okay for the other leg so <laughs> so um yeah just kind of getting that put together this week nice so perfect hopefully here in the next couple of days great great then we'll have a big party for you this week <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, just so everybody knows, the way that I achieved Emerald was the way that Chad did and the way that the beans are, uh, in that I sponsor my husband's uh, coach account on one side, and then I sponsor my mom's account on the other side. And yes, I do pay extra money for that to happen, you know, to keep them active. Uh, and yes, whenever those coach accounts uh, receive the free customers, because they're both Emerald, I've built both of them to Emerald, um, then I get to essentially triple the amount of free customers and Shakeology leads that I get. Um, so if you have not looked into kind of the logistics about what that looks like for you, for, you know, for anybody who's watching this, um, you know, about not only kind of getting yourself to Emerald by sponsoring two coaches, um, but also um, tripling your, um, your income possibilities. It's, it's essentially like having two additional centers um, so that, you know, if you think about, we haven't talked a lot about bonus structures, but there's this thing called uh, the two-star bonus, five, 10, and 15 star quarterly. Um, if you have a rank of two-star diamond, um, you get a bonus. And uh, for five-star, 10-star, 15-star, uh, it just gets bigger and bigger. So I think this past year, the bonuses Sorry. for the two-star have been, um, it's been like a couple thousand dollars and that's quarterly and then you know for five star it's like seven thousand dollars for ten star it was like twenty thousand dollars and for 15 star it was over forty thousand dollars and that's quarterly 
Um, so if you can imagine what it would be like to not only build up your primary business center to any one of these bonus levels, but also two other accounts that you have control over, um, then you know, that's potentially you know, $120,000 quarterly in bonuses. Wow. So huge. And you know, also a really great motivation to make sure that those business centers that you're controlling are as high up as possible in your organization so that as coaches are added to your team by yourself as well as everybody above you, uh, that you know, those business centers are um, reaping the benefit of all of the uh, volume points that are being accrued. So just a little business. <laughs> uh, I didn't know about any of this stuff until like years into the business and I wish somebody had told me because uh, it would have changed a lot of things for me. Um, so anyway, congratulations, uh, Brandon for Success Club and Chad for Success Club as well this month. I'm so proud of you. And um, now we're all at a new month. Every single one of us are at zero. Even the top coach in the in the in the organization, Melanie Mitro, who is like a gajillionaire and has a huge team, she started November first at zero success club point. So we're all on the same race together, uh, and can do that. Um, but I wanted to kind of transition into our tribe talk, um, particularly with the beans, because I know that you've already done a lot of work of of developing a tribe with your music career. And um, you have a, um, a pretty clearly defined tribe within that group as far as what I can see. And as you've been kind of developing the fitness side um, of you, it's seeing that I'm seeing that parts of the tribe that have been following you for your music and for your faith and spirituality um, are uh experiencing some changes <laughs> and you had some interesting uh posts about like just letting people letting you want to be and you know you're not going to go to hell for doing yoga and dressing your kid up in halloween costumes <laughs> and, we have a lot of conservative people that follow us <laughs> we don't always see eye to eye <laughs> i read some of these some of your posts your rants and I'm like <laughs> cheering you guys on because I'm just so what I'm happy about is that you had know in your heart who you are and that's so clear to you and it's just a matter of out so that those who are of like mind can continue to find you um, but I'd like to ask you like how is that going for you what's your experience like from the inside it, as far as from as far as building your tribe and now kind of defining your tribe. Hmm. Well, I think we go through like a series of emotions with all of it. Like pretty much any motivational place that we put is from like something that we just experienced or in the middle of experiencing. And so, like, I tend to write my feelings better than I do actually, you know, verbalize, ver verbalize them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, so I go to writing, and um, generally I'm, like, pissed off or something by, like, something that somebody has said or whatever. Like, you're going to go to hell for doing yoga. <laughs> yeah, like, you're going to go to hell for doing yoga, you know, because we have, like, all these... Sure. We have a vast array of friends, and probably the people that we'd be drawn to would definitely not be the conservative crowd, but we have a, a big conservative crowd that follows us. And is it mostly because of your music career? It's right? because of our music, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and um, we're in churches. Right, so, so that's where a lot of it comes from, and just our own personal experiences and, and becoming who we've become individually, you know, and... Um, and so I think we just started writing it like several years ago as we both started on our own fitness journeys and everything. And so that whole platform developed before we ever got to this point. And so now it's like, now we have a product 
that just naturally, you know, falls into it. And it was kind of like what you knew would happen when we first started talking about it. Yeah. And, and so I became a beach body coach at the beginning of July. And the first person I didn't really push it yet because we were moving and all sorts of stuff. And the first person that contacted me with it was a music minister. And, and he just, because he read so many of my different posts and about struggling with depression and, you know, um, needing to lose, he was needing to lose weight. He just contacted me and said, look, this is where I'm at. I'm really struggling in my life. I'm struggling with depression. I've got all this weight to lose. I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. I don't know if I'm sharing this with you, but I don't understand. And so that was when, that was the first conversation, the first person that bought for me. Mm. And that just kind of opened some doors for just kind of communication. I was just like, well, this is, this is what we're doing. First of all, I, I relate to all of that. And here's my experience. And here's what we're doing. I don't know if you'd be interested in it or not. And then before I knew it, he bought like $500 worth of product. It was crazy. And that's when I was like, okay, well, we got, and then literally it snowballed from there. Krista started, she, she was the one that started posting like the pictures of the containers and food and hashtagging 21 day fix. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden people started asking us, you know, well, mm -hmm. what, what is it? What are you doing? And then, um, you know, that's kind of just snowballed. And so, so I think now I'm learning like the trick of juggling, like what I put tonight was something that I, I saw somebody else put and, you know, and just kind of threw that out there of, Hey, you know, if you get started tonight, um, you know, you could possibly lose 10 to 15 pounds by Thanksgiving. A mix of that, but also just our everyday stuff and our motivational stuff and just being who we are. I think that's where we find that it works the best is we just tell what we go through in a day mm -hmm. or share something, you know, a picture of our, of our meal or something and people get interested in it. They've, they're invested in us because of our I think they see us, they see us living it. Yeah. They see us living it. And then so when then you put that random post about, hey, you can do this too, then all of a sudden it's like you've thrown the nets out there and you just kind of start collecting it. Mm -hmm. so. There is an amazing book out there called Jab, 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 Hook. And uh, I know Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Welcome. I'm Hi. Glad. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> in the car. You're in the car because that way we can recognize you. <laughs> um, and I know Jesse has read this book or read parts of it, uh, but it's all about like social media and it is awesome, like the Bible for social media right now. Um, but the whole idea of the title um, is this boxing metaphor of um, jab, 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 and then right hook. Um, and it's this idea of like on social media as you're posting, um, what, you, what you needed to be doing is these little tiny slices of life. Those are our jabs, you know, where you're just kind of sharing a thought, sharing a picture of your food. It's just very real, just every day. Um, it doesn't have to be like spectacular. It's just you, just who are you? Um, and then the right hook comes when you give an invitation. So people already are developing a connection to you and they, they feel like they know you. And, um, and so that means that when you give an invitation to them, you're not a stranger. Um, and, you know, that invitation for some people is, you know, in a private message and sometimes it's a public post. You know, there's all sorts of ways that that can happen. Um, but uh, this is the difference um, between successful coaches and unsuccessful coaches is that successful coaches spend time jabbing. Um, you know, they spend time sharing their life. Um, and the unsuccessful coaches are the ones who are constantly posting beach body pictures, like corporate pictures, constantly posting things that essentially say the same thing. Um, and nobody knows who you are if that's the only thing that you're sharing. Um, so why would they buy from you? Because there's, there's just no relationship. So um, I, I think you guys both, you know, Krista and Brandon, you do such a great job with, um, with sharing your life in just such a real way. Um, and it's not just like, hey, here are all the wonderful things about my life. It's just like, this is it. 
you know, this is, I'm frustrated about this, or, you know, we had a great time with our daughter here, and that's what I'm excited about. It's just everything. Um, so I, I just want to acknowledge you guys for that, and it's, it's working. Thanks. Well, I think I, you might have said it. Um, I think I heard you say it where Beachbody is not necessarily our brand. We are, we are the brand. Yeah. Beachbody is the product. Yeah. And you know, so we're kind of drawing people into our life, and then are able to offer them the product. And I think her, yeah, I heard you say that, and that just kind of really registered with me. And like, yeah, that's how we need to approach this. And we we purposely. Did I say that right? Put the the hard days or the things that like oh, we messed up today. We did this because that makes us real. Every just because we are beach body coaches doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we're gonna not mess up. And that makes us be real to people and makes very them very relatable. Yeah, because I think that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of failure. You know, <laughs> they're afraid of not being able to to make it happen. They know themselves. They know their weaknesses. So when you throw that out there, I think it, it helps people be like, ah, oh, somebody gets me. And they kind of let their guard down a little bit and then mm -hmm. you can hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the other <laughs> night I posted uh, that I was picking up Rodrigo from the airport and we were going to have a pizza and housewives night. And that post like exploded and I got comments saying like, yay, I'm so glad you're eating pizza. <laughs> And I mean, you're <laughs> just kind of breaking down those barriers. And this is something that, that I need to do better on, but just breaking down those barriers and just being real. And, um, you know, I think uh, one of the biggest fears that most people have is that they're not enough. And if you, if we together are showing that um, – it's okay not to be enough. And that doesn't mean that you can't have an amazing life, even if you're feeling like you're not enough. Um, like it's not about being enough. It's about, you know, creating something that, that you're passionate about. I agree. <laughs> yeah, you agree. Uh, so Dan, um, I want to talk to you and hear your thoughts as well, just about the whole tribe building thing, because I know you've been pretty involved in the GCN uh, group. Uh, so for, for anybody who, and, and Chad as well, uh, for anybody that doesn't know what this is, the GCN is a gay Christian network, um, online community uh, for gay Christians uh, internationally. And they have uh, conferences and they have regional groups and message boards and things. So we, Dan and Chad and I, um, have been a part of this private Facebook group that is all GCN people of our age group. Um, it's like, what is it, like a five-year? Yeah, I think it's 28 to 32. Or, I mean, yeah, something like that. Or 28 to 34. So five to six, five to six year age, yeah. age yeah. group. So like GCN has kind of divided up their community into various age groups and they relate and message boards and stuff. But this is a an unofficial private Facebook group for people of this age group who are gay, who are Christian. And um, the community in there is unbelievable. Like, it's just, it is like, like gonna make you tear up just to see <laughs> the amount of support and love and um, just sharing that's happening there. Like every week they, we do um, um, a prayer list where <clears throat> people just share prayer requests and then, you know, they get prayed for by other people in the group and people are like, videos about their stories and sharing. I mean, it's just incredible um, the relationships that are being formed there. And, you know, Dan um, found your fiance through, through the group, right? Isn't that how you met? Um, we knew we, we knew each other before the group. There, um, we were actually dating before when all of that was okay. before it got started. But yes, um, Seth is a part of the group as well. <laughs> so, um, Dan, do you have any thoughts just about your observations about what makes that group, that tribe? 
so powerful. It's multi-layered. It's not a, a one, you know, it's not like we're just talking about Christian-based issues. We're not just talking about gay issues or, you know, it, there's so many layers of complexity to it uh, that it doesn't just take one one aspect to to feel like you're connected um you know if if all you want to do is connect with um people on a on the prayer side of things you know you can certainly be there um but if all that you just you're making a lot of noise <laughs> i <Not> mean <me. laughs> i'm in my car it's sad I'll mute myself too. <laughs> oh. um, but the the realm of it being a very multi layers of of involvement, so that it's it's not just one one area. And it's also multiple people that are are really spearheading it. You know, Tino is the uh, the main one who is um, who organized a group, but and he organizes the prayer side of things. But anyone can post in there, and um, and it becomes this. Um, you know, sometimes there's been conversations that have went to two, three hundred comments in a matter of an hour, an hour and a half time frame. Um, and sometimes it's very serious stuff and other times it is just completely off the wall. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and I've been looking at that and going, okay, how, how do you model that in a, a realm of what we're doing with um, with beach body stuff, um, and I, I haven't quite put my finger on it um, because we don't have you know beach body stuff is very much so one topic oriented um, on the, the realm of fitness um, and and nutrition. Um, so you bring up a very good question, Michael. I'm not quite sure how to answer that in terms of how to, to expand that out beyond, um, you know, and how, how to get that, those multi layers going on. Well, if that's your non-answer, that was an incredible non-answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit the nail right on the head about the multi-level of relating and um, just that it's it's very free and it's open and and there is some some leadership that provides some direction um, you know but there's nobody saying like hey guys you need to be posting we need to hear from you right like that's just not the the community and um, I mean, there's never been a need for that. <laughs> and it's, it's so interesting. And I love that you're thinking about like this model. And it's really been, you know, I've just been thinking about it too. Um, and it kind of leads me to kind of back into this whole tribe idea. Um, the personal development book that I've been reading right now is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And um, I'm loving it. And every page is incredible and changing my life. Uh, and they, he talks about, um, you know, what are the motivations that people have for when they do things? And um, it has these concentric circles where it starts in the middle is why, right outside of that is how, and then outside of that is what. And uh, the problem that most marketers make is they start with the what. They say, our computer has this kind of processor and this kind of screen, 
and it weighs this much. Uh, and then, you know, they come in and say like, the how and then here are our programs and then the why you know, most people don't even get to that because they're so bored by all of this data that they have no personal connection to um and this guy must be he must have stock in apple because he's constantly talking about apple and steve jobs um but he says that apple you know did it right where they start with the why um, you know, where they say you know, the cause, the belief that this company is operating under is that we are um, uh, wanting to revolutionize um, the idea of independence um, and make life simpler. And all of their products, um, so like that's their why, their how is, is you know, through this community that they've had. And then the, the what are my iPhone the reason that I have an iPhone an iPad and a MacBook Air like I bought into it I bought into their why um, hook line and sinker and you know I I don't care if a Samsung phone has whatever whatever if this is the same as 2012 like I literally don't care because I'm not connected to the what I'm connected to the why <laughs> um, and it's this whole idea of <clears throat> the why is, um, and we've talked a lot about like our why as a coach, Chad, you know, you mentioned the whole idea of why, like what's motivating you. <clears throat> and the way he is using this why is, is like, this is a central belief or a cause that resonates with people in such a way that they own it for themselves. Just today, the chapter that I read talked about the Harley Davidson brand. Uh, and that is, um, that uh, uh, 12% of Harley Davidson's income comes through merchandising, comes through, um, through their brand. <clears throat> and he said, you know, the story about this guy who has a Harley Davidson tattoo and, you know, tons of people have tattoos of Harley Davidson. Um, some of them don't even drive motorcycles. They bought into the belief the why that Harley Davidson represents of this rugged American independence. Um, and, you know, they, it, it, it ceased to become something that Harley Davidson is about, um, but it's actually something that person is about because they resonate with it so deeply. Um, so what does this have to do with us coaching and Beachbody and, you know, Brandon, you, echoed that you know our brand is not Beachbody our brand is us um you know what is our cause that we're rallying around what is the belief that we are operating under and I know for me um you know the, the people that I naturally attract are people that I have similar interests you know for the people who are on this call right now um, we have some sort of a connection, um, you know, whether it's music or faith or sexuality or you know, there's some connection or age or location um, that, that we already have. And um, I've, been, I've been kind of emotional the last few days because <laughs> I've been thinking about <laughs> cause and this belief. Um, and it's been really hitting me um, that, and this actually ties in with the, prayer request post that I posted in GCN today. <clears throat> There's so many people, and I'm just going to get really specific in the gay community, just because that's kind of most of my team is connects with that. And if you're not fantastic, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, everybody, everybody on, on this team, you know, is either an ally or gay, it, it seems. <laughs> um, just to be really specific and the the thing that just gets me so emotional is when i see people who are um, struggling accepting themselves with their sexuality and you know with their faith because it's something that i went through as well um and just the feelings of loneliness and depression and how that ripples throughout our entire lives into our jobs, our professions, feeling stuck doing things that we don't want to do, or feeling like there should be something more, looking for spouses, finding a group of friends that we can really connect with and, and you know, feel like we're home. Um, and, you know, even judging from the amount of attention that this 
you know, prayer request for asking for people to join me in praying for those who are feeling this way, for the amount of support that that got, I mean, I, it's just further indication that this is something that's very real. Um, and, you know, while I'm kind of focusing on the gay Christian community, um, it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. You know, people are in need of connection. They're in need of feeling like they can love themselves, um, feeling like they can be proud of themselves, um, feeling like they they can be imperfect and enough. Um, like these are the things that are just people are struggling with, and that's that's this the the pain point, if if you will that I just run into all the time and I've experienced myself. And I'm so grateful that God has blessed me in my life in such a way that, um, that I found, found the light, you know, that I've seen you know, a, a way through, that you know, situations like that are not hopeless, uh, but that there, are, there were tons of people who were around me when I was struggling that, um, who were loving me. I couldn't feel it because I wasn't letting it in, but you know, they were around me and now kind of seeing it on the other side. Um, you know, if there's any way to kind of, you know, break through whatever barriers are there to help people know that they're loved and valued and enough, um, you know, that's the thing that I, I think is healing of, of this world. And that helps us to, connect with each other more deeply and more authentically. Uh, and how this connects with each body is that, um, you know, fitness and eating well is, is like the world's healthiest drug. Um, you know, if you are exercising regularly and if you are putting good food into your body, then you're your mental state is going to be better. Your hormones are going to be more balanced. Um, your body is going to transform into such a way that you can really feel proud of yourself. Uh, and that, you know, you can feel like you don't have to be hiding in the shadows, um, which allows you to be open and free to connect with other people and not worry about being judged all the time or judging other people. Like all of that just kind of fades away and it ripples out in this other direction um, that is spiritual, that is social, that is professional, um, that's personal, um, that's sexual as well. And um, for, for me, I just see that, you know, that personal fitness is an entry point into that. And we have an incredible structure and great tools you know, to help people with that. So, um, that's kind of the, the why, the belief that I have as that I'm developing that, you know, I believe that as people get healthier, they can love themselves, which will allow them to connect more deeply with other people and experience a sense of belonging. Um, I believe that, and I believe that it is something that is so much bigger than myself, uh, that it, it, it's, it's, something that anybody can look at and they can say, yeah, I believe that too. And then they can own it. Um, and, you know, then it becomes, you know, theirs. And then they can spin it and grow it in the way that makes sense. Um, and I'm just, no, no, more I personally connect with whatever my core why is, whatever my operating belief is about, you know, how do we kind of fix a pain point? Um, just the clearer it is the people that I should be around, you know, that, that, you know, I should spend time with and the clearer it is um, of people who tend to be attracted to, to me and to what I'm doing. Um, and those kinds of relationships are fun and effortless. And I never feel like I'm strong arming, strong arming anybody or manipulating anybody to, to buy something from me. Um, it's just, it's, you know, it's a different game. It's just a complete game. So, you know, as far as like building your tribe, um, if each one of us can really think about like, who are we? What has our life experience been? What are our own personal pain points? And how do we share those in such a way 
<clears throat> that's relatable to other people, that's inspiring, um, and that is real and causes them to just be magnetized to you and to what you're doing and to want to believe in the thing that you believe in. So I saw a few people nodding heads when I was kind of talking about my belief. What, what's resonating with you? And you know, is there a way that you feel like it fits for you and a way that it might be spun for, you know, for, for you and your life and your community? Excuse me as I get a talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think for I think for us like the two things that is real kind of similar to what you just said just in our own um, with, with our own personal lives um, I talk a lot about overcoming depression and that resonates with a lot of people and then Krista talks a lot and she's done a lot of women's things where she talks a lot about never feeling pretty growing up because she um, you know was she always felt like the outcast going out to the furthest part of the playground because that's where nobody could make fun of her and, and never feeling beautiful and that resonates with you know these women that have been there and have felt that same way so I think that's where um, and we both come we're, we're both pastors kids so we both come ah! from, yeah. <laughs> Hold that us. We come from these really conservative so backgrounds. Um, we come from these very conservative backgrounds, both of us, but both of us in our uh, uh, being adults and kind of, we kind of come into our own personalities and beliefs um, that are probably a lot di well, they are a lot different than lot different. what our parents taught us. Um, and instilled in us. And I think that a lot of our questioning, a lot of those ideals and being more open-minded and, and broader thinking along with our own personal journeys is what has resonated with people. And that's, you know, that's where people kind of keyed in and then they, and they've seen the transformation because a lot of these people saw us a hundred pounds ago each and, and, you know, have, kind of seen this whole overall change in us. And um, I think that's where we're finding our tribe is these people that are relating to us because they're like, you know what, I've kind of thought that our beliefs are a little bit different too. And you guys seem to be a little bit more open and I want, I want to think that way or, um, and, and that's where I think our tribe is kind of coming from. I think that's the people that are, and the people that want to make changes in their life. Yeah. And if we can connect what you're saying with <clears throat> your tribe and what Dan was saying with about the GCN group, <clears throat> um, is that uh, uh, usually people who band together really closely are those who have experienced the same kind of challenges. Um, the just the whole idea of like i have experienced this kind of pain and so have you so we can understand each other mm -hmm. and you know that's <laughs> i guess the one good thing about pain is that that's everywhere and it's so it's it's like immediately in front of us you know whether it is about depression or you know feelings of worthiness or sexuality or um having changing spiritual beliefs like whatever it is it's just i'm sure any one of us could think of three immediate things <clears throat> of some sort of challenge that you've experienced and you know i always think if i've experienced something with the seven billion plus people in the world chances are somebody else has too <laughs> so um, I'm curious to, to hear from uh, Pete, Chris, Jesse, <clears throat> how, are you, how are you processing this? How does this relate to you?
Um, you know, I think I, I relate more to uh, what Krista and Brandon were saying, uh, although it's all kind of related. Um, I, I went through a, seri- a, a large period of depression with some vision problems. And uh, a lot of people who I seem to connect with are also uh, at the gym, exercising, uh, staying active to work, work through a, some series of life events like that. Um, but I also see, uh, and it's closely related to what Michael said as well, I feel the same way, that there is a, there's a healthy spirituality when your body is well. It does connect. Um, and I, I know that in, in the church that we're part of, we, we believe that as well. Mm-hmm. Healthy mind, healthy body. And I think that that's true. Mm-hmm. So I, I do connect with that. And those are the people that I do spend a lot of time talking to. For sure. Yeah. <coughs> that's really good. Yeah. And of course, that doesn't mean that if <coughs> someone comes to you that is not necessarily part of that tribe immediately, that you know, you're <laughs> not going to be able to help them or whatever. But <coughs> these are just... Just the, the natural interaction that, that you're going to experience. Um, and yeah, yeah, there's a great John Maxwell quote I just saw today. Um, and that is, to grow yourself, you have to know yourself. Mm. That's good. Yeah. I'm writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine we're all going to post that sometime in the near future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I bring that up just because it, I don't know if I could have had this conversation 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't in a place where I knew myself well enough. <clears throat> um, I knew the roles that I was playing very well. Uh, I, I knew what was expected of me very well. Um, and I knew about my heritage. Um, I knew all the answers. But even the concept of knowing myself made zero sense to me at that time. It was like, well, of course I know myself. Why wouldn't I? I'm, I'm me. <laughs> like, that sounds nice. ridiculous. But now looking back and you know, think, seeing all these people around me who are like, Michael, you need to get to know yourself. You need to like, do this and this and this. And you need to think about these things and read this book. And do this therapy and this retreat and everything. And, and I was like, uh, okay, I guess, whatever. But like, I didn't even know that I didn't know my time. <clears throat> um, and I'm constantly learning more and being that, you know, I still have no clue who I am. <laughs> but, but at least I know that now. And, and you know, that's, that's, you know, a step in the right direction. So, you know, if anybody here or whoever watches this video afterwards is kind of thinking in your head, well, duh (laughs) that's it's so you know so easy like what is there to to know about myself um you know everything has been fine um keep looking (laughs) in time you'll see it so well i'm just looking at our time 903 i promised rodrigo that i would end it at a at nine because <laughs> we had the balance of family and beauty talk today <laughs> so um everybody i'm just so blessed uh to know you first and even more blessed to be on a team together and um i believe in you so much and um I'm just really excited for you. So just know that if you ever need anything, <coughs> beach body or non beach body, um, I hope I can be there for you. So with that, have an awesome week. And uh, just so you know, I, I, I will be posting this video in our coach group, uh, but it is private and it's unlisted on YouTube. So, you know, if you, feel like you ever divulged personal information that you don't want public don't worry it's all completely private okay (laughs) (laughs) just want to be sensitive so all right well have a great night and i'll talk to you guys later all right good night good night all right good night